Hey, what's up guys? My name is Charlie. Today we're going to be reacting to some more Nostalgia Critic, and it's going to be the top 11 dumbasses in distress. Oh boy, this is going to be totally awesome. My guess on the list is it's going to be Batman and Robin, because Robin's always getting captured. That's just a guess. Um, but you always see Robin in trouble, so I'm guessing Batman and Robin's going to be on the list. Uh, I don't know what else, because all I know is really Batman and Robin. I would say Superman, uh, the, you know, the woman. Um, I can't remember her name, Lewis or something like that. Could be wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, check out the video, shall we? Let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. We're all familiar with the term damsel in distress, mm. the helpless female who always has to be rescued by the male, and in return turns herself into the reward. It's a cliche as old oh, as time itself. But in recent years, it's gone through sort of an equal rights movement. <laughs> You've discovered that even males Oh yeah, here we go, Batman and Robin. While, and that's Saturday, really, stupidity God. knows no gender. But God damn it, do they have to be so obnoxious? <laughs> the cliche is bad enough, but when the character clearly and Robin shows that he or she can take care yeah. of themselves, Robin's it just pisses you off when you're the one who has to save him in the end. Mm. Or on top of that, if they're just annoying as hell to begin with. Now, I'm not talking about all repeat hostages. For example, April O'Neil got captured all the time, yeah. but she was also funny, clever, and had a very likable personality. Yeah, it was... Indiana Jones' father got captured a lot, <laughs> but again, he was a lot of fun to have an adventure with. Well, he's rolling These are the people you so... want to smack in the face every time <laughs> they get in trouble. They're the obnoxious little pawns whose only purpose is to be rescued, to the point where you just want to say, you know what? Let the train hit. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to count Fuck down it. the top 11 of them <laughs> here him today. Die. My top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, okay. sit back and enjoy the top 11 dumbasses in distress. Okay, let's see what he has to offer, shall we? <laughs> the top 11 dumbasses in distress. Number, Number 11. Okay. Mary Jane Watson. Oh, now I'm going mainly by the movies with this, though I did hear she gets kidnapped a lot in the comics and the cartoon. Mm. Yeah, she's nice and all, but it's pretty clear she's just there to be the person Peter saves. Yeah. I mean, let's do a quick count of how many times Peter saves her. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times. Damn. That's six That's times insane. in three <laughs> movies. Some would say one is enough, but six? Mm. Hell, one time was actually in a lunchroom. A fucking lunchroom. Are yeah, you kidding me? Come on. She can't even eat without somebody <laughs> having to save her? We honest to God have to protect her from her own food? <laughs> Put traffic cones around that apple juice. That shit is lethal. Yeah, she's How about the fact that the reason Peter need to rescue a life of apple afraid juice. that if the enemies find out who he is, they'll kidnap her. Well, she found out in the second film that she was mm. already in peril five times before that point. Hell, after she got together with him, she was only kidnapped once. <laughs> so I guess in a way that's sort of an improvement. <laughs> yeah. The only film where she actually starts to become a three-dimensional character is in the third one. But even then, ironically, people say there was a little too much of her. And mm. then most of the time it was just her bawling out Peter anyway. Oh, don't worry though, she'll be hanging out of a building in a few <laughs> seconds. I love Kristen Dunst, but man, Mary Jane is a Mary Payne. Yeah. Some dream, huh? I have to agree, even though I love the movies, way too Number much 10. capturing. Number 10. Kaylee from Quest for Camelot. Quest for Camelot. Okay, He's never gonna let United this movie alone, is he? Allowed. He's always gonna <laughs> pick well, on this. Her going against the norm and wanting to be strong. But the only problem is she isn't strong. And yeah, I, don't mean physically. I guess. I mean in yeah, any true. Sense. All she ever uh, says is how she's going to be the world's greatest knight, and yet every well, other second she always sometimes has to be you don't need physical strength. Man. Sometimes smarts is man. more better than strength. <laughs> well, maybe you could say she was just starting out, and she hmm. only got better as time went on. Yeah. But no, she gets captured again, and has to be saved this time by a chicken. A <laughs> <freaking> <laughs> chicken. chicken. I love this movie though. <laughs> Lady, if you're put in situations where a blind man and a chicken can do better than you, <laughs> maybe knighthood shouldn't be your first option. Well, I see no reason why I but like I said, out. maybe she I fights with her intelligence. Time where she you know, saves strength the blind isn't guy, everything. But that's it. Every other time, it's just her getting captured and yet still boasting about how she's going to be the world's greatest knight. <laughs> Young lady, you definitely need a career change. Yeah, I oh want boy. to save Camelot. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. Wheelie and Short Round from the Temple oh, of Doom. Indiana Jones. See what you Jones. will about the other Indiana Jones movies, but they had some kick-ass leading ladies. Marion? Awesome. Mm. Dr. Schneider? 
awesome. That, uh, that Russian dominatrix? Woman screaming Weird, all the time. Awesome. That was really. And then you yeah, got Will. My God. That pain in the uh, ass who never shut yeah. the fuck up. We're not thinking! Yeah, We're this. Oh, uh, God. She contributes nothing, constantly has to be saved, and all she does is bitch and moan throughout the entire film. Yeah. Wait a second, Izzy! I can't go to Pang Cop! I'm a singer. I just don't get it. Why did they oh, put her in this movie? I fight for. The biggest trouble with her is the noise. She's so no annoying shit. that Indy would rather the be The movie's self aware. <laughs> hey, at least they're quiet. Hey, I'm right here. <laughs> but she's not the only one who's a pain in Kali's balls. Short Round is also an obnoxious little fortune cookie. A lot of people... Yeah. I don't Hold know if it's to say or not, but his accent drives me nuts. Actually, I take it back. It's not the accent. Mm. It's the fact that he screams every line with that accent. You say that the wall. I thought the kid was pretty cool in this movie, to be honest. Even though it's a bit kind of annoying, like but tops. I thought the kid was totally awesome. Joy. <laughs> I also love that scene where he breaks through the bridge. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to his credit, he does help Indiana Jones out once in a while. Uh, and I guess this reminds me of Star Wars Jar Jar Binks. Um, most of the time, he's just being rescued. That's what it reminds me of. Just the constant screaming all the way. <laughs> you know, screaming all the way. Indy, if you honestly think these two are worth dying for, they ain't. Trust yeah. me when I say, your Willy is not worth saving when she acts <laughs> like... Willy. Well, your Willy. <laughs> you know what? He's crazy! Mm. Number eight. Number eight. Robin. Robin, Just about of every course. variation of this character has him as the Robin. whining little decoy. I mean, just look at what he's wearing. Batman is dressed in black, <laughs> he's so he like can blend into the shadow. Yeah. He wears the mask so he can strike fear into the heart of his enemies. Robin just Robin looks like just, a bullseye. He's a he seems to just scream, glow up hit me. toy. I mean, everybody Jesus. knows it, and everybody makes fun of it. Even he's Tiny. An LED light, like Someone a Christmas tree. Someone who can wear a bright red uniform and draw all the fire uh, uh, attention. So what do you say, decoy, the pig hostage? I think it there's little point in discussing retirement benefits. <laughs> it was pretty annoying in the anime. Oh, series. boy, that's too funny. He just seemed like that dweeb that was going to try and represent the younger, hip crowd. Mm. No problemo, bad. Yeah, it did yeah. work. Remember how many times you said that growing up? Don't look at me. I flunk Greek mythology, remember? <laughs> no problemo. So was this fucking the Terminator? Character was a little more <laughs> badass when they switched into Terminator the younger. Two. <laughs> but even then, he had his fair share of hostage situations. No problemo. <laughs> Actually, Robin was one of the few things that the movie Batman Forever did okay. They did make us feel the pain that he was going through, and shockingly, even managed to turn that bullfighter cape into a pretty cool costume. Yeah, I saw. Time, Robin actually sort of actually, looked classy. I like the movie, in that movie as well. By so the end, he had to be rescued <laughs> one, two, three times in the entire third act. Yeah, and of course, exactly. do we even need to discuss Batman and Robin? Yeah. How does dialogue go again? <laughs> Well, he may be the world's most I like that psychic, Batman movie, but he's though. Also one instance yeah, where you it was just pretty good say, for me, anyway. <laughs> maybe I should let him drop. Holy migraine! It's one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> Number, seven. Number seven. Okay. Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget. Yeah, let's ignore that piece Inspector of Inspector Gadget's always getting just focus gadgets, on the cartoon. isn't he? Inspector Gadget really pisses me off because he has all the power in the friggin' world. Yeah. He's like Robocop times ten. He has every gadget for every problem. And what always ends up happening? His damn ten-year-old <laughs> niece always has to save him! It's true. That's so true. Good God, why didn't they just give her all the cool <laughs> little gadgets? I mean, true, she has that book and that watch, but couldn't they just put all that stuff in an intelligent person? In fact, how cool would it be if Penny got all those gadgets? <laughs> wow. Fuck. That would <laughs> be fucked up. Fucking sweet. As much as Penny always had to rescue her uncle, it was sort of a strange circle of It was a nice way of introduction Inspector Gadget to introduce gets in trouble, her Penny to has the to save story. Him. When so. Penny gets in trouble, Brain has to save her. It's a bit but like Scooby-Doo, you know, Corporal when... Corporal Cape Man has to save him, but if Corporal Cape Man gets in trouble, well, the fucking world blows up. <laughs> Bottom line, just don't rely on this idiot. He's a fucking lemming. I guess he made the show fun for kids, but man, someone seriously needs to give this inspector a clue. <laughs> you can count on me, Chief. I'm always on duty. Number six. Number six. 
Lois Lane. Lois Lane. Well, you know, you can't have a dumbass in distress without mentioning her. Lois, it is. Well, it just depends on what version you go to, though. If you go to the older comics, she's I just a dimwit I thought this would be on the list. Su like Superman Lois is always being captured. Dimwit. By the time the movies hit, though, she was a little bit more developed. Yeah. And grew much more attitude. Mm. The same thing can be said for the animated series, where they turned her into a much more cynical <laughs> and enjoyable character. Yeah. But you could make the argument that this only made her worse. In the old days, it was just common for women to just be the reward <laughs> for the man, and therefore be underdeveloped. But with the movie and the cartoon, they developed her as a tough, no-nonsense person. She would I respected to get her for that. Was to put yeah. her all I liked her in the movie. So really, she was her getting more respectable, all the more realistic. Make a whole lot of sense. I guess the idea is that she's way in over her head, but <laughs> they establish that she can be really smart. And yeah. a smart person wouldn't constantly need someone to save her. She could probably <laughs> take care of herself. By doing this, she becomes less of a character and more of an annoyance. You just want to say, dude! Don't go in there! You know what's gonna happen! Take sure. the hint! This also makes her maybe a little bit too reliable on Superman. For someone so smart and independent, she sure is willing to just throw herself for him, <laughs> isn't she? They even put oh, fun boy, yes. how many times Superman rescues her. You just hold on that little lady and uh, you'll be along. Miss... Lane. Lane? Lois Lane? The one Superman always saves? Afraid so. <laughs> Damn. He's roasting her. At least with April, you sort of knew she was greedy and yeah. probably deserved what was coming. I guess true. On top of that, she served as the hero's means to interact with the human world. Lois's job just seemed to be to get caught mm. and then report on it. Still, I later versions good movies. To make Superman the original movie is still, maybe that still just amazing. Maybe that stupid. I hate to say. Doesn't make it a bad movie. Just it. want to clear that up. It's still a good movie. It's super Mario Originals. Number five. Number five. <laughs> Jubilee. She's Jubilee. very similar to Robin in that she was supposed to represent the younger crowd who watched the story. Yeah. And for a while, she did. In the first few episodes, yeah. she actually does have some real good lines. Get down. <laughs> yeah. She was in uh, X-Men. I mean, sure, she got caught a lot, but she was starting out, too. Mm. But by the time the first season went by, not only was she getting caught a lot, but she was a whiner. Are you blind? Is this gonna take I've only long? watched a couple what of X-Men, so I'm not really familiar with her. Sort of knew he was dead on arrival. You know but I, I do know her, the but crowd not like that. extensively. And plus, a grown man hanging out with a little kid. Kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, that is creepy. Yeah, that is. A you gotta admit. Had a better chance of connecting because she was part of a group. And on top of that, it was a group of rebels, which every kid loves and relates to. So that's why it really sucks that she became such a third wheel. <laughs> we wanted to feel like that kid who was part of the team, but she mostly just complained until somebody would come along and save her. Yeah. And we didn't want that representing us. We wanted to fight right alongside them, mm. not be saved all the time. I don't recall her being too much better in the comics, but at least she did have a few more kick-ass scenes. In the show, however, her power is about as effective as... A spray can! <laughs> spray can. Yeah. Oh, never-ending story. What else can you but... say, but... Does oh, a mall baby chili fries? That. Okay. Number four. Number four. Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo. Oh my god, I hate this I mentioned Scooby-Doo Scooby earlier, Scooby didn't I? I said... I don't know, nephew, cousin, weekend son, I have no idea, but he was annoying as hell. He would always act tough and rush into situations thinking yeah. he could save the day. But of course, a lot of people hate Scrappy Doo. So physical violence is probably not going to help you here. Let me at him! Let me at him! He was alright, but... Shaggy and Scooby uh, had to go in and rescue him every time. He'd throw himself into peril. Yeah, you're making these guys look brave. I didn't really pay attention. Brave. Come on, Uncle Scooby. Da -da 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 -da. His voice was annoying, the character was annoying, the fact that he never shuts up was annoying, God, he was annoying! <laughs> oh, and did I forget to mention his annoying catchphrase? <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, though, the Scooby-Doo oh, cartoon yeah. is amazing. First the Pound Puppies movie, now this? <laughs> a a lot, along with uh, the Scooby-Doo Zombie Island, wherever it was, the movie. If I ever see a that dog like amazing. him crossing the street, I'm stepping on the gas. Because the sooner I can eradicate this like little that. bitch from being anybody else's remember problem, that. the best. Six times I remember watching that. <laughs> Number three. Number three. Jar Jar oh, Binks. Jar Jar as if I Binks. even need to go I into much this, detail. I mentioned this, didn't I? He cemented himself as one of the most annoying oh, characters boy. in all of Sydney. I believe I was mentioning this in the Indiana Jones scene. He always has to have his ass saved as well. Mm. Even when they first meet him, they have to rescue him from something. That's a good introduction. <laughs> you saved my again. 
I heard Jar Jar Binks was actually designed to be the Dark Sith movies, Lord, like he was going to be the ruler of the, <laughs> the, the dark side. Else is either getting that was himself in trouble what I heard. Or getting other people in trouble. And then somehow that, this that was going to be a plausible a of government. way. Though I guess that makes sense, saying nothing but garbage, for being terrified Star of people, Wars and yet never story listening to what Sega. they have to say. <laughs> yeah, that adds up. And I guess I'll point out what everyone else has as well. If Jar Jar was never put in power, then the Emperor never would have made his clone <laughs> army, and everything wouldn't have gone to shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Everything that goes wrong in the following <laughs> yeah. movies, you can totally blame <laughs> Fuck Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> To be honest, I don't mind him. Because what of else Jar -Jar. do I even need to say about him? His voice sucks, the character sucks, yeah. he can't take care of himself, and he doomed but all the galaxy. To be honest, Fuck I don't him. mind him as I much said. as everyone hates him. I, I don't mind him, honestly. Number two. Number two. Princess Peach. Oh, fucking hell, Princess Peach, yes. I could Peach, yes. punch this <laughs> The princess is a number really, class of bullshit. How many times has this whore uh, been kidnapped? Haven't they upped the security yet so that it doesn't happen anymore? And every time it does happen, she just keeps her pretty little smile. Tee -hee, yeah. Fuck you, bitch. I'm risking my life for you for the 20th fucking time. <laughs> And don't you dare insult me by saying you're going to bake me a cake. No, no. You give me a position of power, you fucking bimbo. Yeah. I know more about this kingdom than you do. You see, I've been through it like a million times. You can't even stay around long enough to remember what it's called. Yeah, Mario's... I'm running the show now, Peach. I'm running the show. <laughs> Mario's, like, committed fucking genocide by killing all the, the Goombas. Fact that she has the amount no of problem that you have to save her people all Mario's time. killed. It just never seems to phase her. She never seems to feel bad. In fact, listen to this note that they have in the Mario Brothers Wii game. Dear Mario, because of my most recent kidnapping... Most recent? recent kidnapping? <laughs> what is this, just another day at the store for you? It doesn't even wow. phase you anymore. That you is... go out there and risk your life, whore, it ain't easy! <laughs> the other thing that annoys me is just that she never does anything. She hmm. just smiles and gets caught. That's it. She's good oh, at Mario wait, Kart. <laughs> there was Mario 2 where she could friggin' fly in the air. Well, that was really that cool. Well. <laughs> but guess what? That was a dream! Oh. It never <laughs> happened. So that literally means she has contributed nothing in any of the Mario games. Wow. <laughs> okay, you got Smash Brothers and Smash Mario Brothers, Party and yeah. so forth, but come on. They're just go-karting and playing games. Hell, mm. she uses a frying pan as a weapon. A frying pan <laughs> a frying and her butt. Pan. These are what women in the 40s use as weapons. Are you fucking <laughs> serious? Next you'll be telling me her main weapon in a game is crying. Reminds me of uh, Charlie's Angels of uh, GameCube, I believe. Or was it for the PlayStation? Can't remember. I hate you. <laughs> Ugh, Princess Peach, if you still want to save her after all this, well, you'll have plenty of opportunities. Mm. Now I know what you're thinking. How can I possibly top Princess Peach, one yeah. of the most famous damsels what? in distress of Who, all time? Who's it gonna be? Believe it or not, there is actually one worse. Really? Who could it possibly be? be? Let's take a look. Okay. And the absolute biggest mm, dumbass one. in okay. distress is... Bella. Oh, Twilight. fucking Twilight. This has to be <laughs> the most Twilight. selfish, <laughs> male-dependent, uncaring, manipulative, uh... self-centered, pretentious, idiotic, whining little bitch bag you will <laughs> ever see in your entire life. Uh... And honestly, that wouldn't be too bad character. It'd be very, very interesting if it was intentional. <laughs> but it's not. Bella is supposed to represent the everyday teenage girl. If that's the case, then the story really got mixed up who the blood-sucking monster is. She thinks she's tortured even though really she has no problems. She gets a crush on a boy and decides she wants to marry him. Even yeah, though she's not I, I don't like the yet. Twilight she series. Wants to be I a find them which everyone has said very is teenager her life away. But of course, style. at the enlightening age of 17, uh, she already knows exactly what she wants. Better love Aren't story than Twilight. Aren't you glad you through <laughs> with every bright idea you had at 17? Aren't you glad you totally committed to is something that you knew you could never make a mistake on at that age. Mm. Oh yeah, 17. Nobody <laughs> ever fucks up at that age. Yeah. The boyfriend Nobody tries to leave her so that, that he can save her, but she constantly keeps throwing herself off cliffs and mm. putting herself in danger just so he can notice her. Good fucking God. No, That's right, God, girls. Yeah. If your boyfriend leaves you, do exactly this. Mm. I assure you it won't backfire in the least. Sure, <laughs> you might be dead, but that'll teach him. She then gets another boy involved who actually seems supportive and attentive, but she dumps him because the other guy looks at her weird. And by God, how can she turn down a guy with no personality that just looks at her weird? Again, one of those brilliant choices you make at 17. 
So now a whole war is going on, all because of her. Of and course, everyone is going it's always out of over a woman. To try and protect her, and she's simply like, "Yeah, that's cool." Oh wait, she does try to say once that she's no not woman it, is but worth that only lasts this. A few seconds. She then realizes that she is worth it, and is totally Bullshit. on board with having muscle boys carry her around <laughs> everywhere. And just as her boyfriend finally agrees to marry her, imagine a boy being pressured into marriage. <laughs> she dicks around with the other guy yet again. Wow. Oh my god. I mean, oh yeah, my I, I, god. Yeah, I don't like the I've Twilight never seen movies. A character more so needy fucking and more bad insecure. for me. She's, She's a so such a teenage cliche. That it's actually kind of scary. She is a scary character. In another dimension, maybe she could have been a great Shakespeare villain. This really complex, developed, psychotic mind. But as the common, everyday, relatable girl that we're all supposed to identify with, she is, and always shall be, the biggest dumbass in distress. True. I'm the nostalgic Well, they could be worse. Pray for these boys, people. <laughs> oh, God, fucking Twilight. Pray for them. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I, I'm not a Twilight fan, so I'm sorry for those who are uh, a sort of Twilight lover. But really, I'm sorry, but I cannot enjoy Twilight movies. I can't sit through. Them. I couldn't even watch the first one without crying. Not because it was emotionally sad, because I was physically in pain from watching it. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Yeah, okay, that's the end of the video. Uh, yeah, I, I think I got a couple right. I, I said Robin, I mentioned Scooby-Doo, I did say. Uh, so I'm glad Scooby-Doo was on it, uh, Scrappy-Doo. Um, also, Indiana Jones, I said, uh, during the Indiana Jones, I, what did I say? I said uh, Jar Jar Binks or something like that. Um, yeah, Jar Jar Binks, a lot of people hated uh, Jar Jar Binks in, uh, you know, Star Wars, but I thought... He was okay, you know, even though it's trendy to hate Jar Jar Binks, when I first watched, Jar, uh, you know, Star Wars and I saw Jar Jar Binks, uh, I, I really didn't sort of go, oh my god, this is the most annoying character in the world, I can't stand him, I, f I felt like he was out of place, but I didn't sort of exactly sort of freak out, maybe if you're a serious, dedicated Star Wars fan, I can understand that perspective, because if they did that with um, Star Trek, because I, I, I'm more of a fan of Star Trek than Star Wars, so if they did something like that in Star Trek, I would be emotionally upset as well, um, but then again, they had... Um, uh, you know, so they're two different things, two different examples, but I, I can understand the position that, you know, the, Jar Jar Binks absolutely destroys the fucking Star Wars Sega, uh, you know, the, the, all the movies, I can understand it, it's, it's understandable as a, a, Star, a Star Wars fan, um, but, uh, yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I believe they said Jar Jar Binks was gonna be the sort of, like, the Sith Emperor, um, that was going to be a sort of uh, direction they were heading. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's a fact. But I just heard a rumor, a couple of, uh, you know, just sort of questions and all that uh, on Reddit and stuff. Um, just theories that Jar Jar Binks was going to be, uh, you know, the Sith Lord. He was going to turn to the dark side. And it was very fascinating uh, on a sort of speculation sort of grounds, but uh, you can speculate about anything with Star Wars, because Star Wars is totally awesome, don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars, but I love Star Trek, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a war against what you like most, Star Wars versus Star Trek, which one do you like the most, <laughs> the age-old question, um, but uh, yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give a like, comment down below, and make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content, I'll see you guys in the next video, peace! <laughs>